this is you now with your story. It's not uh, by force an opening. Mm -hmm. It's not by force an opening. It could be a fragment that mix, uh, that touch. Mm -hmm. We could jump from. I'm not sure we can really jump from your story to her, but yeah. there could be some meeting, mm -hmm. maybe. Yeah. I don't know. You you mentioned that. I was actually. I think it's interesting if mine instead of becoming an opening becomes an ending, mm -hmm. because then if she could bind this life and then mm -hmm. she's choosing not to go, like she could have this arranged or this paid marriage for papers, and then she's the last minute deciding that's not what she wants to do, and that's the end where she. Just, that's the end. Yeah. 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 And the end is, is then sort of funny because we know the scars. Yeah. Um, maybe the guy, the guy offered her to have some laser on the skin and she said, no, I, I would rather. Yeah. And she's, don't take the train. And then the, the guy, maybe he guess she didn't want. Maybe he's not so surprised in the end. Yeah. But then, he sees this guy pretending he has no ticket and suddenly he has a new affair going on and he's giving <laughs> the ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like a, it transfers off a sort of, of an ending that is almost open. Uh, yeah, open. Yeah. Oh, an opening, yeah. Yeah. maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 this is possible. Yeah. So from <laughs> south of Portugal, to you okay? Well, I mean, it's you. It's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, some other fragment or <laughs> something you um, you had in mind? I can go. Yeah, um, mine would be you have like a caretaker, or babysitter, who um, is actually kidnapping the child. And I don't know the exact reason. What is a, a caretaker? Uh, maybe a nanny. Mm -hmm. or, uh, yeah, and so. It's not someone taking care but of. But it's not. No, no, no. No, that's an undertaker. Yeah. Undertaker. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that would make a different story. <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> but um, but they're they're kidnapping the child, and they get on one train, but in their, like. Can you can you sleep just a little slower? I'm, oh. I'm having trouble catching. Okay. Well, they um, they get on the train. The child, she or he is supposed to. Uh, like, yeah. there's already this trust relationship between mm -hmm. the child and the the adult, and yeah. maybe the child's three, four years old, just doesn't re can't really articulate things yet. Uh, maybe even two, but uh, gets on. They get on the train, and then the child actually gets off. And the caretaker is like putting the bags up and everything, and then the child, and doesn't notice this right away, and then the doors close, and the kid actually gets on another train going a different direction, and then the caretaker is like looking all over the train, but at the same time, can't really say anything because she's she or he is actually kidnapping, and at the and then at the same time, those parents are just you could cut to them just realizing that something's wrong, like these two people are gone, and so, and then you have the kid going somewhere, alone, with no identification, no ticket, no, mm. with, with nothing. <laughs> do, you, do you think, let's say something, the caretaker kidnapping a child, uh, because of the trust between them, the, the kid is not anxious at all, mm -hmm. uh, but do you think the caretaker left a note, or nothing? Um, that, possibly. It, no, like... Is it a ransom? Or is it, see, I don't know, it, because the caretaker, yes, cannot look for the child. Well, but, uh, see, I was thinking child, if... cannot call the police. Can't call the police, but, see, I was thinking then the kidnapper actually has to look for the child as well as the police. Yes, yes. And yes, so, yes. because there's, if there is some sort of money involved where she or he is taking it to these other people, then all of a sudden, um, like even in the hero's journey, they have to, have to get the elixir back, have to get the, you know, 
that thing that they've lost, but then also the police have to get that and the parents. And so, um, and then the kid just just wandering around. Now Maybe he gets off the train. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, let's say I haven't killed a child or whatever. Mm -hmm. And suddenly the caretaker reading the newspaper or watching TV and the mm -hmm. Now that the caretaker is in in South Dakota or, or, or far away and suddenly you realize on TV that those people are accused of having mm -hmm. Yeah. Or in Burden, that people are kidnapping for a good reason. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And only a word or his word could yeah. clarify the situation. Yeah. Meantime, the child. Mm -hmm. is See, I've also, yeah. I also <laughs> thought maybe instead of a ransom, that um, there's actually abuse to the child going on in the house. And so she is actually saving the child and ah, kidnapping for that reason. Yeah. And then, the then she's like, She's screwed because she she can't tell anybody, but she really cares about the child. <laughs> get the kid back, um, and I actually like that angle more than the money side. Yeah, but me too. Um, me too. The kidnapper then, the caretaker is then uh, helping the child. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Wow. Breaking the law to be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and also yeah. in that case, you can't uh, go to the police for two reasons. Exactly. Because uh, not to reveal themselves, but also not to uh, give the parents an indication the, of where yeah, the, the child, child back. Might, might yeah. Now, if the child is found with traces of being accused, mm. and all this, the, everyone could accuse the caretaker, mm -hmm. if it's a he, for instance, or, mm -hmm. and it, it's, instead it's the parents. It's mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I must say something that has no interest for the story. It, it's my own personal response. Uh, I like there is something very serious and fragile that a child is alone. Almost free and yet not afraid because he liked the caretaker, so he's uh, open in life. For me, if we add the child abuse thing, the child immediately starts to be a victim, mm -hmm. has been suffering a lot, and therefore, for me, there is a, in this story there is a possibility of fiction that could be very serious and risky, but the risk is the child alone, the kidnapper accused, the parents uh, not knowing exactly what to do. But if somehow there is child abuse, the story will be um, masked or fulfilled with the idea of child abuse, as if the body was uh, in the mid the body of the child was in the middle of the story forever and ever. And this is for me, for me personally, not to you, but for me it's a small drawback. Because I think it creates a, a sort of Compassionate obligation okay. and and fright that it's almost too much for me to. I think anything we do with fiction will be under the name of child abuse, mm -hmm. as if we, for a certain time, decide nothing of the sort happened. The fiction suddenly is completely free yeah. of become a comedy, or a, 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 a cop could be interested in the story of that caretaker, you know, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Something terrifying mm -hmm. and fun could yeah. happen. Yeah. With child abuse, you are like... Uh, yeah, see, and that's actually, initially I was thinking of it as a comedy, but then I thought of the child abuse, and then it's not funny at all, but... Just the idea of the kidnapper losing the child. Yeah, I think it's <laughs> open and 
risky also because mm -hmm. the, the child is in danger of going mm -hmm. being alone with no, you know. But actually, stuff. this is the thing that is most seductive about it is that like, um, there are some children that you see in the world that really they are Definitely. okay. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, they need to be fed and blah blah blah. But <laughs> but if you uh, even this kid that was in the um, in the restaurant down there, mm -hmm. who somehow has such a presence of uh, really being able to take care with themselves. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just, uh, that image is really uh, seductive to me, like this very young child who, mm -hmm. who has a really clear, like, yeah. clear look, like could yeah. just be traveling and it's, enjoying. It's, a, it's seductive, it's an, a seductive mm -hmm. idea, but um, I see less and less uh, children along yeah. Oh, the world's so changing. Like it's, you know, it, well, yeah. it doesn't happen. But they don't, that's they also don't even play on the streets anymore. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think that's also. Yeah. I love it when a you know, child catches your gaze and you're like, yeah. oh, wow. And they are great for that. She looks into your soul. They are really great. <laughs> yeah. For me, your, your story in itself contains um, a potential of. A complete film doesn't need to be connected yeah, to one yeah. or the other, yeah. especially in a huge continent. I mean, like uh, USA. Mm -hmm. I mean, all those states with borders and going from one place to another. I think we we join them. Although it's a kid, the hobo idea <laughs> yeah. of wandering, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. the wanderer, mm -hmm. except. <laughs> Uh, the caretaker becomes a wanderer, and the kids also, you know. So I sort of take it for granted that it needs to be developed, but it contains every all its element mm -hmm. yeah. because they could meet people on their way, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like um, I, I, I think that no need to connect it to. Other stories, mm -hmm. and my only thing was the child abuse. But mm -hmm. if you agree with that, I, I, I do actually. I, I don't like child abuse myself. Mm -hmm. Did you picture a real girl or a real boy? Both. I'm not. I don't know. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. Yeah. Well, at the age that he's talking about, it's not. You're kind of the same. Unclear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you know, the, the little girls sometimes look like mm -hmm. fragile, like with this thing, little dress. And yeah. Pink, you know. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> hmm. Maybe the older boy and then the younger girl, but I'm not sure. Ah, are there two? No, but if, like, in that age range. Oh, like, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Or maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think it's um, it's solid enough to be developed uh, uh, yeah. like, I like all uh, other the other stories uh, are more European so they connect with borders and stuff more of the immigration thing. It doesn't mean that this little boy or the caretaker could be Mexican without it, uh, a green card or something, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, it's also possible, mm -hmm. but that's okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Therefore, it's a good reason also the parents are a little embarrassed to say, she runs away with the kid because she is not legal, mm -hmm. or he is not legal, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe he's not only taking care of the child; he's also mowing the lawn, or you know, I don't know. The family suddenly f cannot say everything. Yeah, like yeah. everybody's done something wrong but the kid, and so yeah, nobody can say anything, but, 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 but they have to. But it's not abuse; it's just yeah. Yeah. lie, and yeah. it's somehow. Uh, they've all transgressed a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the yeah. condition of this world. Yeah. Right? In our innocence, <laughs> we're all trying to be good, maybe, but we're just not perfect. 
Yeah. yeah. And adults can't, there's such paranoia now. It's like adults <laughs> can't approach children. Yeah. They are their children. They're oh, such yeah. a yeah. weird... The last, so, yeah. It's the like last time I... Through the world, everybody, the adults would be okay. terrified. I can't help this kid. Right, yeah. so <laughs> <it's weird. laughs> <And Yeah. laughs> how the comedy yeah. would develop, you know. The last time I was at the zoo, I really just wanted, I, there were all these little kids and like a little kid seeing an elephant for the first time. I wanted to take photos of them, but then I was like, wait, I can't. Yeah. I can't can. take photos yeah. of kids yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh no, no, like, no, no, it's just, it's something would happen. Yeah. It's a similar yeah. 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 Like at the playground where my daughter plays, yeah. there's yeah. one guy who appears to be a pervert and then one guy who just appears to be a photographer and they take yeah. pictures of the kids, but it's a playground where you're not allowed in silence, you have a child. So when wow. these perv and potential not perv are photographing, people rush outside of the playground to photograph them. And some people will Whoa. then, like the perv just starts walking away, and the non-perv is just like, okay, photograph me. I just don't care, because I'm a photographer. I just happen to be taking pictures through a gate of your kids. And, um, yeah. Okay, yes. I didn't picture you as a pervert, so I was asking, huh? why I came at you? <laughs> no, I just was, I just was amazed by their, just like, yeah. but these kids, just like, they see this animal, and they're so happy, and they're just, I was like, wow, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. I want to take portraits of these kids. I and I, I actually, I have to tell you, also, the good reason why I like this story without child abuse is because it's very embarrassing. Child abuse, yes, exists, yes, and then... Not to be able to photograph a kid in a zoo, mm. seeing an elephant for the first time, I can't stand it. You know? yeah. Yeah. I really yeah. can't stand it. it it's, mm. uh, to have a, a, a play garden that is not allowed, I mean... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nothing's illegal, but then suddenly mm. it's a problem. Yeah. You know, my brother is... Um, my young brother is... a. Uh, Second marriage, married with a young Chinese architect, and they live after a year in Paris, after a year in Beijing. And in Beijing, the bus, the, the way, um, and they have two babies, a little boy of two and a half, and a little girl of one. And, and the way uh, the grandparents like. The Chinese way to use the bathroom is not shower or bath, is to have a basin and you know to, to do it like the traditional way, even if you have a modern apartment, you know. Mm -hmm. So they love to put their grandchildren in that basin and mm -hmm. and they have internet and they send me million pictures of <laughs> my niece and nephew naked with the grandfather, you know, and the other day I, I tell my brother, maybe I will be arrested. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have a picture of babies naked, an old guy, an old Chinese guy, you yeah. know, <laughs> watching them, you know. <laughs> it's so oh, horrible, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, I can't speak Chinese with them. We, the only way we can express ourselves is by sending each other picture, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and we are, those little children are so nice for us, you know? Because they, are, they speak both languages, I mean, the, the oldest of the little girls, she can't speak yet, but it's so strange to be communicating only by them, you know? Mm -hmm. And suddenly I realized I had strange picture on my head. You know? Not strange, of course, uh, adorable yeah. picture. But maybe they could uh, mm -hmm. understand that. So, we have three. Um, well, what happened happen in, in, in what you propose? It's. Um, you don't propose an opening or a momentum of, or a scene. Precisely, you you propose a story. That's what is different with 
a you or you have. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. Because this is a story mm -hmm. and we can develop it the way mm -hmm. we feel and open it the way we feel. I, I don't think I have a narrative. I try to think about it, but I ended up thinking more structurally, and I, I don't know, I kind of understood the way you were contrasting the characters, and, but I'm sort of a, a, not a narrative. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have a hard time, I think, think developing much. Um, so, I don't think I have a story or an image, really. Um, yeah, I was just thinking about how we create risk, how, as I mentioned before. Like, um, when, when we have so much, if you do have so much mobility and so many choices, it's easy to move, and so I was thinking about possibilities where you, um, but it's harder to, to stay put. Or, I mean, in your film last night, the woman, you know, she doesn't, she could have left, but she, she chooses to stay, and she sort of had a choice, but I mean, less, it's interesting if you have a choice to leave and you, and you choose not to, or you choose to confine your life and deal with limits. And um, so it's harder to develop a story like that. It's easier to develop something out of novelty than it is to develop something out of, you know, sticking with a path. So anyway, that's all I... I think <laughs> when there is a piece I didn't translate when she's on the tractor with her son, she sort of speaks and it's not, you can hear, she says, when your grandfather asked me to come and work in the property, uh, he treated me like a... a domestic you know? and now it's mine mm -hmm. so I'm not going mm -hmm. to leave it and then when she speaks to the boxer she said in France I'm no one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. she in fact she's brave but what else could she be right. in yeah. fact yeah. Yeah. when she said that about her grandfather on the tractor had her son already gotten off no, 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 it's so like he's, let's, let's but he's not it. hearing well, he's just yeah. confused. Yeah. She says, and she turned to him and she says, and don't worry, I, even though I will never let you go, I will always stand by you. Huh? And then he was not always there. No, he's still there, and then he's, there is this yellow dog, and then he disappeared. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, he vanished yeah. for her. Because in the film we see him wandering by the other house. But for her, he vanished. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But for me, it was important that she, a uh, uh, choice to stay was not completely heroic. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's because she knew to, she would be taken by the French army with almost nothing, a dress or two, her son. A little necklace, and then what? You know, nothing. At least there, she is a sort of. A, she has a little kingdom, you know. She has somebody. Mm -hmm. Maybe she sur she survives, sort of. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. We, with Marie, we had written her. In France, like a part two, we had written immediately uh, a sort of. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to do it, but I, uh, we needed Marie and me to imagine her alone, uh, you know, somewhere we, we know Marie and me working in a supermarket, yeah. and because we knew a woman there, and we thought she was. Escape or survive? In Ivory Coast, they all survive. were or saved by the French army, a lot of them. And the one who stayed? They were with by helicopter. Yeah. Some of them are in France or came back now. Okay. And few stayed. But at, at their, the risk of their life, and I think of what I've heard, I mean, coffee, if you don't take care of it, like, Wine, uh, you know, it, it dry. It, it has to be cut. Okay. It's a lot of work. If you don't do it, then uh, it doesn't. Uh, the 
cherry doesn't mature, you know? And so what you're saying is Algeria right now? Algeria? Oh. Uh, it's not Algeria, it's uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. Well, Ivory Coast. Coast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Algeria is different. There is no French people uh, farming there. No, mm -hmm. no more because Algeria is a, that the independence was sixty two. No one, no. I think the only European American people working in Algeria today are either in the diplomatic corps, either in the middle of Sahara, South Sahara, working for gas and. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So essentially, the story but takes no place one is in there. 2004, 2005, when the Ivory Coast hit the Two bank, thousand. or a couple of years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Ivory Coast, it was, um, yeah, I think I was here actually. Uh, mm -hmm. It was when I was working on the intruder. I remember watching TV mm -hmm. and I saw on the news the the camera, uh, the journalist was in the helicopter with the army, and I, and I saw the small houses and the French people. They were on the roof with one or two, you know, and yeah. and they were crying in the helicopters as we left everything behind, and and somehow I thought of someone who doesn't want to leave everything, mm -hmm. and they were not very. I didn't like them. They were not friendly face for me. Especially, I, I hated the women. They were like wearing um, too much jewelry. You know, the jewelry on it. You know, yeah. although they were farming, <laughs> they were simple people. They, yeah. they pretend, you know, they are like a, a Vuitton luggage or yeah. you know, just hard <laughs> thing. And I thought, and immediately there, there were, uh, that's why in the, when we start working on a script with uh, Maria, I told her, look, I cannot film someone I, 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 I don't like. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So we have to make Maria a little bit someone I can stand and mm -hmm. I would understand. Mm -hmm. That's why when the helicopter is going away, she speaks of what she thinks the pilot is anxious. Those mm. dirty white people, we risk our life to save them. And look what she's doing to us, you know. She said that, but I didn't translate because it was like, she yeah. said, those dirty white, they think they belong there, they, they behave like, uh, you know. And we, poor soldier, we risk our life to save those, you know. So she, she knows what the, the soldier thinks about her kind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But of course, for me, she was different. She was not like those horrible people I saw <laughs> crying in the airport. We lost everything except my feet on back. <laughs> <laughs> so, what would you uh, place the value of her necklace at? Modest, more sentimental than. I choose a Dolly. necklace I like mm. myself, you know, and um, very simple and sort of poetic with blue but butterfly because I thought it was important that a little boy would look at it if it was like say a, a Vuitton diamond thing, mm. maybe a little boy, but I thought this little blue but butterfly would please a child, yeah. you know. That's why I choose this necklace. Mm. But by the way... It looks like the one from the 35 shots of brown. Yeah, it's the yeah. same woman who made it. Oh, yeah. 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 Because <laughs> when I did, I did both of it together mm. and she... I, I wanted to use little pearls I, I find and she said, no, I made one for 35 shots of brown with mm. fruit and a daisy. Mm. Mm. You were to say something else about the boy, the butterfly, people should say No, that. I thought he would look, the other boy take the little yellow dog and yeah. him, he has this little blue butterfly. I, I would not think of 
those child. The only value for the two kids it's the little gun. It's the gun. Mm -hmm. Seeing the jewelry mm -hmm. has no value. You know? It's just catching their imagination. Mm -hmm. yeah. Although in a certain way, it also does have a value because then you see it again as like on the, the on, on, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You give it to the girl, but it has a value. But it's a, it's not like something. I think it's the kind of jewel you ignore the price. Yes, the, yes, yeah, no, I, I, I get that, I, but, it, but it's a more, its value is the symbolic that it's... it's yeah. yeah, because yeah. when it's Maria, right. when they shot the, the, the guy, the, uh, the guy with, with her in the truck, and she turned around and she see the little, mm -hmm. it's frightening. Yeah. Because then they know they have been intruding. Yeah. They stole her yellow dress. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Because the only trace she has of them, it's at the in the bus. It's a little bit uh, mm -hmm. muddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But until that, she doesn't know. Mm -hmm. You said something about the, when you made the two films together. You were thinking of one story where the person knows where they're going through life, and another story where they're kind of. Yeah, for me they were very complementary. Without it, it, it happened by chance mm -hmm. because. It, the two producers get the money almost in the same time, and I, I had to obey the law of the, 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 the bank. The money was there, but they were they come from very different. Of course, uh, the story of the father and daughter was a, 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 a sad story because it's a. It's two people who like to be together and they're separate for good, you know? Mm -hmm. and, but they do it knowing what they do for the good of each other through their love, you know? And I think when I was watching this TV image of those French people being rescued by the French army, I hate them, although I think the New president of Ivory Coast is, is, is really a monster. But those people were terrible to me. They represent a France I don't like. And so I, I decide, who is Marie, that the, right, the co-writer, to create someone that we could understand in the end and not despise too much. But of course, the trajectory of the story is Not uh, the narration doesn't come from love. It comes from a sort of a eagerness of uh, resisting. Mm -hmm. When everyone tell me to go, I stay, mm -hmm. and I'm not afraid. You know, mm -hmm. I I don't I like that in her. But I think it's not, it, it, in a way, she's uh, completely lo alone in her dream. She's not with her son, she's not with the workers. She, she pretends she's so good, but she's not. She's, um, I think she only realized when she gets to the bus station and she starts crying on the shoulder of the woman that she, she is too late. Until then, she thinks she, she still all the things she will manage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that moment when she gets to the station, when the bus doesn't stop, she understands <coughs> she missed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the other film where they all decide, they decide together something that maybe is painful, and yet. It's their decision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was uh, interesting to have the two with the editor. We were together with two films. You know, we we had the two films in mind always. It was very interesting. There's this time when the father says to the to Joe, "Oh, we're going to stick together. Things are going to be fine. Don't worry." Because she, when she starts like cleaning the house, yeah. she wants to move. She wants to Mm. Right, you know, 
that's so true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Can, we, can we take a quick break? Yeah, Since of course I was again for that. <laughs> When you want to send a message to someone, you, you, you do something with your eyebrow, you, 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 you know, you yeah. <laughs> And I have to tell you, when I was working in Tahiti, in the Polynesian island, it's a way of communication, but uh, uh, not certain, but at all. And at the very beginning, I was in Tahiti, preparing a thing, I didn't understand, I was asking, a question and I would have this eyebrow movement that says means yes, no, of course. And I had to read all that and <laughs> it took me like three days to understand. At the beginning I thought nobody's answering my question. <laughs> I realized yes, of course, you know. And it's so nice when you go in a shop and say, Man, can I have an eyebrow or whatever and the woman was a fur. Well, it's, it's a way of interjecting without yeah. interrupting the flow of conversation, which I but am also guilty of. In but. France, you know, so it took me like to adapt myself with, I could not even move my eyebrow myself, you know, so I couldn't respond, you know. I, was, I also think it's interesting when two people see something, when something's going on, and you both catch yourself seeing it, and you kind of signal, like you have a moment where you're like, you both mm -hmm. see something else that other people are paying attention to. Yes. Like that. Yeah. 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 I, I saw uh, during recess before the February uh, the story, Harry's story, that the situation uh, you, you, you described the very first day, uh, Saturday, when uh, two trains are um, close to each other. <laughs> crazy. I thought maybe at one point. The nanny or the character, the boy uh, caretaker, is uh, seeing the little boy in, in the other in the other yeah. carriage. Yeah. But by the time mm -hmm. he, he managed to get down, the train yeah. is gone. You know. See, I, I thought about that, but then then that person would know would have a, a they'd know where the kid was going, or at least have an idea. The direction. The uh, direction. Uh, yeah. You could also do the thing where their back is to the train and they're looking and you can do the kind of comedic thing where the kids in the in the window behind them doing something while they have, they're like looking around they have no idea. Like, or the train side by side and yeah. they don't see each other. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. We see each other. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. better, yeah. yeah. Okay. So I took the assignment as a... Um, I guess I took it kind of literally what you described yesterday as a given that we were working from. So I guess I primarily what I'm going to do is re-articulate what we came to yesterday and attenuate it and tighten it and then suggest possibilities that come from it. Um, the one thing that I liked yesterday that Jared brought up was the idea that rather than using a voiceover, information about the backstory the context could be provided by shots, things overheard, information happening within the train car itself. Because I, I basically see just about everything happening within the car. And while I, I could imagine no end of camera angles and even shooting from outside the car into it to watch uh, multiple narratives happening, it's still all about what's happening in this car. And um, so I'm sticking with the individual who is trying to not have his ticket taken. I'm sticking with the couple um, who one is there, one is not. And the idea of borders and risk, to me, um, it seems that the whole immigration papers issue, it's, it's not that it's been done a lot, it's just that you know, we know there are human issues behind lots of things that might not have a human face on them. So like when I think about borders, my preoccupation is always customs duties and movement.
moving property from one country to the next, which makes me think about intellectual property and copyrights. Um, but since 1977, the copyright issue is not really an issue. So it's like duties and things. And it started making me think about things like pharmaceuticals. Something that's available in one country. Uh, keep in mind that I, I, I am French, my English sometimes, your last word is? Pharmaceuticals. Medication. Ah, okay. Pharmacy. Um, so there's things that are available in one country that are not available in another, or the price structure is different based on which country you're selling it to, and these, in combination with the differences between healthcare, let's say, and Europe and the states, create intractable issues for people that, to me, involve borders and involve larger implications of life and death and struggles and need and compassion and you know what we all care about. But it's not like that story has to be presented on the screen. And so for me, compelling narratives imply that there's a lot of backstory and there's a lot happening after the movie. And we're just doing a quick frame of, you know, 90 minutes or two hours of, you know, we get a sense of what these people are doing. So, you know, I, I feel like a lot of the backstory could be implied but not stated clearly and also a lot of what happens after the end of the, the um, movie. That said, you know, we have to have a full story. And so, you know, I think the, today when we were talking about, you know, moving from, let's say, England into France, into Europe over a uh, immigration issue, I started thinking about that as, you know, three countries, there's two people on the train that are our main characters, and then there's one person who's implied you didn't get on the train. So that basically structures to me as three countries, first story. And if I we're thinking about the idea of, let's say, like a pharmaceutical or something that like, you know, I know no, the Novartis campus in Basel is right by the French border and right by the German border. So they could ship stuff in and out very quickly. But you know, there's also the Basel train station, which will take you right into France. And maybe it's something, there's, there, there are, the, the person, like, you know, multiple borders mean multiple frontiers, and you're coming in and out of the European Union and you pass in and out of Switzerland. And um, I, I, I feel it's like kind of going from a situation of more control to less control by going from Central Europe out. And um, the, I like the idea of the two characters that are on the train possibly being a woman from the couple on the train and a man who does not want his ticket taken. While the woman from the couple might be trying to help the man in some way. I don't really feel the need for them to communicate. Like, she could be, like, trying to help him without him knowing it. Mm -hmm. He can be unaware of the help. I feel that the, 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 the back story and the kind of continuing implications of what's happening in the train can be... can be pointed at without being stated. And so... When you say could be pointed at without being stated, for me it means that it could be there without being the main subject. Yeah, it doesn't have to be in dialogue. It could come in from oh, this yeah. background noise that's happening in the, like, you know, there could be like news reports about healthcare, it's a new drug discovery, but it's mm -hmm. too expensive for people to get. It's only available from Novartis in Switzerland. And while, you know, Novartis, of course, wants to sell it all over the world. You know, people's insurance won't pay for it, or it's experimental, so the FDA doesn't approve it, and therefore insurance won't pay for it. And all there's there's all these issues of access and all this social material that these borders and different economic structures imply. So, like I feel that the um, you know the dialogue, the interaction between the characters, what people are doing in the cars, you know, if we're gonna like, you know, if your dialogue in white material was going to include the entire history of the Ivory Coast and French colonialism and the injustices of the coffee farmer and the white man against the black man, you know, the, the movie would be painful to watch. Oh, of course, but, yeah. But that said, it's still, it, we can't count on the fact that the viewer is going to know all that. Although we have a, you can get a sense, that we, can, we can assume that there's going to be a certain 
level of understanding. So, you know, I think what Jared was saying about having this information kind of bubble up in the car, like a shot of a newspaper and a conversation between two people who are not main characters, I think all of that can really fill in what I'm unable to articulate as the story that's happening between these two people who are, well, the woman is communicating with the guy. Well, she's trying to help him, but not really communicating. Yeah. And um, so that said, like, what are they really doing? Like, I, I still kind of feel that we're at a point, well, I'm at a point where I don't know the exact details. Yeah. But, but that said, I feel like the idea of this risk, the risk has to be some idea of getting something that somebody needs, maybe in the United States. Like maybe somebody's traveling to get something from Novartis to somebody who can't afford it in the United States or whose insurance won't pay for it. So there's some risk of essentially importing something and you have some financial risk that is minor, but the reward is somebody's going to you know, have their cancer stopped. So um, I feel that you know, all of the implications for the risk. It was a big thing when the first treatment for AIDS started. You know? Yeah, at AZT, exactly. Each time I was going to Africa, my suitcase was full of uh, uh, pills and everything for friends in Africa who had no access to those medications. You know? Yeah, yeah. And, and so while, you know, these issues of risk, like, they have to be big. I mean, if this, if, the, if Risk is only compelling if this is a matter of life or death, or you know, happiness versus you know, depression. It has to. There has to be some scale. But I, I have to tell you something about this. I, I like the, the idea of the, the precious medication, something from a lab in Switzerland, like Novartis. But I, I, I remember when I was doing this, I was bringing what they call it from AZT. To Congo to a friend who is a uh, is dead now. His, his wife and him were uh, they discover in France they have aid and they need a Z T. At that time, uh, three and B therapy were not yet used. And when I was putting those medication in my luggage, uh, either I had time I would deliver this medication to the French embassy or consulate, or I would go where he was and give those medications directly to him. I must tell you, I never felt in danger. I knew a guy at the custom could open my suitcase and said, aha, because the only risk was not the medication, was that this writer, he was um, the most famous writer of Congo, and also a player writer. His name, if you're interested, by the way, uh, to read some of, his name is uh, Sonny, a great writer, Labou. Like, okay. I, I was I there for uh, <laughs> a week. 
you know, it was weird because there was no risk for me. Mm -hmm. but, uh, the risk was for, for them to die, you know? Yeah. 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 But yeah, I mean, it's life and death risk for him. And yeah. who are extending life and getting a new book. The worst that happened, the, 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 the custom guy would have taken Take the pill from me. Even worse, he would have said, you're not allowed in this country, go back to France. Well, that's the worst, you know, yeah. for me. It, it was very strange because it was like a comedy for me, in a way. And I knew they were dying. So, I mean, th it's like that's why I don't want a whole lot of dialogue and a lot of action within the train. Like, it, it can be several step stages removed. Like, the risk, the reward, or not necessarily to the people that we're seeing. Because um, I feel that that's going to necessitate all this unnecessary dialogue and action and explication that is just going to kind of confuse the story that we're watching these slice of these characters' lives. Mm -hmm. and, um, I like the scene with the lab. Mm -hmm. uh, I like that, yeah. I mean, and, you know, the, the person who didn't get on the train, obviously this can be woven into this in some way. But it's, it's my... Okay, if we're coming from more control to less control, and the guy doesn't want his ticket taken. Like, really what I'm imagining is not so much that it's the ticket is the issue, it's the customs inspection as you enter the EU, and then as you enter Britain. Like, that they're going to look in your back. And my experience with crossing the borders is always with art, but, you know, if, if you're the maker, quote unquote, they, they just assume it's worthless. They assume if you're carrying art, it's not worth anything. And that can be used, well, it has been used in my advantage, but like, I'm thinking about like this idea of the misapprehension of the border patrol. Like the fact that like you can count on the fact that they are less intelligent than you if you are trying to <laughs> deceive them. Because they're, I mean, yeah, you know, they're working on the border and you're traveling from country to country. And I mean, I realize it's harsh, but it's, you know, it, you can fool them. If I was a sort of uh, Wes Anderson on the Hitchcock inside, I will tell you that then maybe you could make a, a sort of painting with a sick material that is made out of a medication. Like Brett and that, Thomas and that You said, oh, t -t -t this is my painting, and the, the customer said, <laughs> well, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. and then on the other side, you go home, you let it dry by uh, with your uh, 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 hair dryer, and then the powder fell, and then uh, the medication is there, you know. Well, there's this this painter named Fred Thomas Ellis, mm -hmm. and he's got all types of medications in his paintings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and he makes these wonderful baroque yeah. co compositions, but the thing is, is their value now is vastly more. No, no, I know, but, but it's let's take the case that the medication is valuable yeah. and you... Hide it in place. In, no, in the fact that the guy who is passing the painting scream at the custom guy, ha, ah, look, you, you, you disregard my, my peace of heart, you know? Yeah. And just, but as a way of confusing the customs guard, you know, just like, this you know, is playing a game. Than, than yeah. Yeah. Just playing a game with the customs guard, but like, there's something higher. Don't you realize this is my life? And yeah, mm -hmm. but he's just trying to change the conversation to something that's irrelevant mm -hmm. because there's something so okay, important. Okay, okay, okay. So okay, you can take it. Here. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so that's what I got. It's good, although I have the feeling that um, even if dialogue does not have to explain the, con the whole context, in your case, I, I feel there is a need of dialogue, of a conversation also to hide something. I think it's not a silent film, it's a film with dialogue, because the dialogue is there to be like a sound of to hide the real uh, context. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's like, this is like an intrigue. It's like, mm -hmm. exactly. it's not a spy thriller or anything like that. It's just like, you know, there's a higher purpose, mm -hmm. a higher ethical standard we're pushing for, greater good. Mm -hmm. And everything else that we see is kind of covering it up so that the people at the border who want to charge the taxes or the companies who want to make more money, all these other lesser things can be fooled. So, yeah. Uh, you? Sure. Um, so, um, I think a little bit in fragments, so I'll try to put them together. Um, the first thing that came to my mind was a very bright white light, and it's related to this, um, and because we're talking about a train, I'm, I'm imagining that as like, if you're sleeping on a train, and at some point the sun comes through the window in such a way that it's uh, in your dream blinding you. I have this dream all the time, so that's where it's coming from. Um, but if I'm laying in bed and the sun comes onto, onto my face, I always have a dream that I'm blind. Um, so I had this, this image of just seeing this, oh, you turned this thing on me, wonderful. <laughs> Thank you so much, I'm so pleased. Um, that uh, you would see just this bright white uh, window. Um, and so I'm interested in that sensation, but also in um, the idea of this uh, half, half waking dream of being blind. And at the same time, then I was, um, the, th the next thing that came to my mind was, uh, was a little girl. And so somehow it's her, her dream of being blind. This will make sense eventually, I think. <laughs> it's, it's fragments right now. Um, and then I was also thinking about the immigration issues in the States. And that um, right now there's this uh, Iranian boy, boy, uh, university kid, who was uh, doing a sit-in in John McCain's office. Yeah. And he's lived in the States his whole life since he's three. He's undocumented and he's gay. It's very unpopular in Iran to be gay. So he's making multiple risks to go and sit in this protest and name himself as un undocumented. Um, so the image that I got to trying to come back to our train <laughs> was that it is he who is uh, on a train as a older man traveling across Iran and that he has this experience, which is not uh, something he's had before, but he has this experience of having uh, the sunlight on his eyes. And he suddenly has this half-waking, half-dreaming image uh, of his little sister when they are young, trying to explain this sensation that she has again and again. Um, And I wanted to try to come back to this uh, complication of the multiple tickets and the, uh, the thing that we were working on yesterday. Um, and I couldn't quite figure out why he would have two tickets. I, I wasn't sure about that. But I was interested in the, in the person who is uh, trying not to have a ticket. And that this person who is trying not to have a ticket, maybe it's a little bit more serious that they, that they don't have a ticket. And that when they get up at one point to go to the bathroom to hide, they take his bag as kind of a security that they could show something, that they could show his paper instead. But it doesn't happen. So when they come back, they make sure that the bag is just a little bit wet and they put it beside him so that when he wakes up and he sees What's, what's happening? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I, I, I spilled some tea 
on your bag. I mean, actually, maybe they took the paper or maybe they didn't. That's, um, but that somehow, even though it is initiated as a kind of an aggression that it would use these, this guy's papers, then they can begin to talk and find something. This is, anyway, it doesn't solve anything. It's just a lot of fragments that I thought about. <laughs> Another way to approach uh, I think I, I, I can catch up with a lot of fragments that the, the, the bright light and being half awake, half blind and being in a train the only difficult thing for me is to relate it to the old Iranian man and his sister. But maybe it doesn't click completely in my mind because what should I say? As if I was not sure. It's ridiculous what I'm going to say. That's fine. As if I was not sure I would have the permit to film in Iran a story like that in a train, you know. Therefore, I would have to go somewhere else that look like Iran, and it doesn't exist, in fact, you know. And I would imagine this old guy, in fact, is traveling in another country because he cannot go back to Iran. Because me, I, I would imagine if I was asking him permission to shoot a story like that in Iran, yeah. No, I would never. Yeah, of course. Permission. No, I think I, 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 at first I, I thought about him in another uh, place, but with this idea of clandestinity, I like the idea that if he, because where I was coming from was that right now this guy is, I don't know, 18 or 20, and he's in the States and he has not been deported and he probably won't be, although it's, a, who knows, it's only happening right now. Um, but I had this uh, idea about this clandestinity that he, for whatever reason, um, if he cannot be in the country that is his home by living, that he then would choose to be at least in the country that is his blood heritage, and then he has to hide who he is. So, um, yeah, so this is what I was just interested in, you know, how he can, uh, <laughs> What do you mean by not being able to go back to his country, then he would... Meaning that if he is born Iranian, mm -hmm. but he lives his whole life in the U.S., and he's deported from the U.S., that there would be... But he's deported, like, if he's 90 years old, he's deported the time where the Shah was still... No, 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 this is not what I'm talking about. The, at the moment, this is a true story, at the moment, there's this uh, student in yeah, the U.S. who uh, is, gay. is gay and could be deported to Iran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this I understand. But and this so all I'm saying is that... not the gay guy in the future. Yes, or is he? yes, this was my point. So it's like a science fiction movie. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's a gay young man. Yes. That is now cannot go back to Iran because he's going to be arrested for being gay. No, but he's not going to be arrested. I, I guess the, the point is that if he, if for example, this this real guy now, if he is deported uh, for being undocumented in the U.S. and he's deported to Iran, nobody knows that he's gay there, but he has to hide himself, and he might choose hide himself for what for being gay. So that's what I mean. Yes. It's not written on his face, no, it's but not. for being gay, he's in danger. Yes, he yeah, is. Right. Exactly. Right. But I guess my point was that he might still choose to stay in Iran, even though he has to hide himself, because it's as yeah. close to home as he can get without going back to the U.S. Does it make sense? Sure, I understand. But now, who is the old man? This old elderly man? Is this... this uh, 
the same the same the same person. So, the, the same so it's later. I'm just using him as a that this yeah. Is but class. let's say if this man is 80 years old, mm -hmm. when he was a, a young man, a gay young man, choosing to go back to Ireland and preferring to live mm -hmm. in Ireland, being gay, mm -hmm. with all the danger yeah. and the risk, mm -hmm. when we are with the old man. Eight mm -hmm. years old. It, it's almost science fiction. It's okay, in the okay. future. It's too far in the future. No, I, I, I didn't name him as I didn't name him as eighty years old. Actually, he's not to go back, even if he's seventy-five. It's in the time ahead of us. Mm -hmm. Yes, you agree. Okay. Yes, it is. So, let's say Iron in fifteen, twenty years might be a very different country. It might be. You know? So it's almost a science fiction story. Yeah. Okay, it could be a science fiction story, it but I wasn't be. going because for this. Because I would not think, I would not think if it's today, if the old man is today, yes. that when he was young, mm -hmm. being gay was not allowed mm -hmm. in Iran, mm -hmm. but it means that it was also before the Ayatollah, if I see his age, and it would be possible to have a living, it, let's say he's in a bourgeoisie, to be gay was possible, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, oh, so you're saying he's an adult before 1979? Mm -hmm. He's in a, the character is an adult before 1979? Or knows, exactly. knows that he's gay? No, I think the, the big change in Iran came with the Ayatollah. Mm -hmm. the, the, when the Shah had a dictature, but not a moral dictature, you know. It, it, it was a military dictature, so you could be gay. You could well, so is, is the character you're talking about an adult under the Shah? That was I don't know. Just, it's, it's for her to choose. Yeah, I mean, I think I took all these fragments. I didn't think about the details so much. <laughs> no, but it's important to know if it's period or yes, yes, no, today or yeah. even for the clothes, for the shape of the train, for under what regime. He was an Iranian. Yeah. He was born Iranian. Right. Or maybe it's, it's that the characters are transposed and it is uh, the person that uh, doesn't have the ticket who is this young man from the States and the older man is someone else who's maybe going no, to... No, I, I, you, you, you don't have to re stop... Uh, no, I'm just trying, just trying to figure it out. I don't... I don't Iron it is strong story, you know? Um, with strong landscape too and strong people. So I think if it's Iron, then must be some specific dates of when he was born, when he's back, because mm -hmm. yes. they went under a different regime, yes. which changed a lot their life, you know. I, I have a story that's very different, but it, your story made me think of it, and so I'm thinking they might, it might, something might be able to, f to feed your story. <coughs> is that my partner's um, uncle was born in Scotland, and when he was like three or four, his, the family moved to America. And so he lived in America until he was like 40, and he was kind of a, a boozer and a, drunk, and a junkie, kind of. And he basically got uh, kicked out of the country and sent back to England. But he was three when he left England, so he didn't know a single person in England and had no contact with England at all. Mm -hmm. And he, he, li he lived there for like six months and then basically died. Like, like destroyed himself, but like being kicked out of a country and being put back into another country that you have no connection like to. Like those young well. Algerian who suddenly are sentenced. They were born in France and yeah. they don't speak Arab, and suddenly they are sentenced twice to jail and then sent back to Algeria as they are yeah. because their parents forget to sign a paper when they were like eighteen or whatever. Yeah. And suddenly they are alone in Algeria, they don't speak Arab, they have absolutely no connection. Mm -hmm. And besides, they come out of jail, so yeah. on top of everything they are very fragile. Mm -hmm. yes, it is terrible. Yeah. 
It's, uh, it's in Arizona, it's an anti, uh, against the anti-immigration uh, legislature. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Brown Meter, yes. Mm -hmm. um, which, what he's referencing is there was a, right before I left the States, there was this uh, cartoon, political cartoon with uh, these uh, policemen in Arizona who are being trained to use the new Brown Meter that is something that they can point at anyone and see if maybe they are a little bit brown, just and, brown and just how brown are you and you know and there's a scale of like <laughs> should I arrest this person or should I you know just interrogate them or whatever anyway it was a it was brown a, it's not real <laughs> but it's this uh, basically the legislation in Arizona is supporting the idea of racial profiling that you could uh, the police can uh, question anybody just according to how they look. Okay. And that, um, so there's a lot of controversy about that. And so this political cartoonist uh, made this ah. drawing about a device that the police can use to decide okay. like, if you have a little you have tint, a little tint skin, like yeah. so the police, I can point at you and like, oh, actually, there's a little bit of brownness there, which is a, uh, you know, anyway. The funny thing is, uh, it, 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 it's scientifically proved that there is only one race on Earth. So it's a new color thing. Yeah. 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 Just like where that race was for a while. It um, it's just where you were, where you came from. We're all. So, yeah. So I'm not completely um, able to tell you something about Australia. Maybe it will. Um, that's okay. I connect to something else. I was mostly unless you have one immediate connection, but I don't have one. Yeah. I was mostly attached to this uh, idea of repeating this uh, whiteness of this yeah. bright, bright yeah. light, and so then mm -hmm. another image of uh, a glass of milk standing somewhere, another mm -hmm. image of the moon. I, I, like I just kept going yeah, with this yeah, white yeah, thing. And it doesn't, uh, mm -hmm. I don't, uh, for myself, I don't get to narrative for a long time in my work. I, I, I like, get, 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 get. No, 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 I understand, and I love the way you describe your work with element every two days with your partner. No, I, it's okay with me. I, I see what you mean. Mm -hmm. could, be, uh, could be this old guy in Iran, I, I am just imagining, could be this old guy in Iran also, like, right now? And being a gay in Iran and knowing this, um, uh, it, what's going on in the US? Well, Maybe it's not the same person, but there's a there's a, a rhyming between the one person's story and, and that person's and understanding. And his length of life allows him to experience being gay under the Shah, under the Ayatollah. Yeah, for example. We could just be parallel characters that, that marry each other in some way. Well, I mean, the idea that it's a science fiction is not a problem to me, except for the implied aesthetic of science fiction. Well, um, so it could still be a story that is set in the future that doesn't have this kind of, like, uh, you know, yeah. magical... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's not Jetsons. Um, what I think is interesting is if it takes place today, to realize that Olga has survived through all the regime, being yes. gay, in Ireland. Yes. Uh, let's say... It's a middle class, so it, it is not completely poor, so it's not dependent. This is important that he has a sort of independent financial independency. Mm -hmm. So let's say he has an apartment and sort of uh, middle class connections, you know. I think the guy could survive, really, you know, mm -hmm. by the fact that he's uh, economically independent and can manage <coughs> I think that's in interesting mm -hmm. to connect with the train I have no idea maybe it's a dream he has all the time at night mm -hmm. to be a kid somewhere and not knowing if he's blind or, or if it's the sun mm -hmm. hitting his face when he 
lying down in a train, rolling. Yeah, I was imagining it more that he would have this uh, this uh, dream or vision or whatever that would uh, keep reminding him of the things that he had to give up, so that if he has to give up the connection with his family because he's gay or what, you know, that like he has. He's In my opinion, uh, if he has a choice to give up. His family or uh, being gay is not that old man. An old man today in Iran, if let's say you're 80 and you will suddenly have to choose being gay or, or leave your country, I think is sex so important at that age that you. I, I, of course, I also didn't, I didn't name him as eighty, but it's okay. <laughs> this old guy. Well, what I meant was that he is is much older than the eighteen year old who was that is his uh, past. But I didn't mean that he was. Oh, no, no, okay. uh, elderly. I just meant that maybe he is. Uh, is you know, in from the perspective of an eighteen year old, somebody who is forty is old, right? So. Um, I'm saying, but true. Wow, yeah. no, but 40 so, for you is an old guy in a train. No, 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 no. I was just, <laughs> immediately I was seeing an old guy. Yeah. No, I was at a certain age. Right. I'm thinking from the perspective of this 18 year old, and so that if he's uh, he's gotten to a place that he's older, not old. Yeah, maybe. Ah, okay. Yeah. okay. But I didn't yeah, mean 40, I didn't mean 40. I don't know how old yeah. he be. But in any case, the, you're right, the time. No, it's possible if let's say that a young 18 boy protesting because he doesn't want to be sent back to Iran. Uh, he, has, he doesn't want to be... But maybe he, he knows someone, his uncle or someone he knows and he died in Iran uh, and made another different choice. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if this takes place in the train. Only the dream takes place in the train. Right. Not the story. Mm -hmm. No, that's kind of a metaphor for transposing plus this other thing, the other. Mm -hmm. But that's interesting to go back to the train when this question of the dream or the thought um, yeah. happened. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't mean to ask you during the question, but is there a passenger rail system in Iran? I have no idea. Oh, well. <laughs> I was really just system. like, yeah, sure. for sure. I was, I was yeah. in Iran. Yes, there, there is. is. Okay. For sure. I think what she, I read this film now. I see, I've seen train yet. Yeah, yeah I, I know they have a huge car culture. They don't. Uh, there are also earthquakes in, in, in California. Cities. But uh, through the landscape, there is. I think there is. Well, well, actually, I think Iran nowadays is um, behind all this um, pressure, political and uh, strength. Yes, they and have a kind of a very urban culture. Actually, yes. I saw documentaries. They have, you know, the, the sh sorry, even hidden. Um, well, this is also what uh, Sharif was talking about uh, yeah, at dinner the other day. That, that, uh, well, no, that, that the Iranian government is paying women oh, in yeah. Palestine to wear the uh, covering. Yeah. Um, yes. Saudi Arabia uh, so, uh, uh, also pay um, African women. Huh? Yeah, mm. So it's a very Iran. common thing. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Not only from Iran. Well, I mean, you know, Iran is using. Palestinian territories to fight a proxy war against Israel, which is why they're paying those women to further yeah. the Islamic mm -hmm. appearance. Uh, mm -hmm. Iran has, I mean, they need to set up refineries because they import 80% of the gasoline they use. They lost cars, but yet they're a, a net exporter of petroleum. They need to get their priorities straight. To come back to a small detail <laughs> of the gypsy, the origin of the gypsies, the real gypsies, about the circus is Iran. Yes, mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> the mountains of Iran. Uh, wow. They were nomads and 
the gypsies are originated in Ireland. Mm -hmm. And the whole country is a plateau, essentially, which was really had never been invaded, from what I understand, because it's, I mean, if you look at uh, you know, one of those globes that you can feel the texture of, mm -hmm. just it's all raised, mm -hmm. which is very defensible. Mm -hmm. See this film, The White Meadows? No. I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because I, I wasn't thinking about it when I was <laughs> thinking about this. It was just I, I was looking for things about the immigration in, in the US. But um, but yeah, I saw that recently. If, if you get a chance, it's. White Meadows? From, from who? Um, uh, what is his name? Iranian name. Okay, I've, I've checked White yeah. Meadows. You can look at the internet. Yeah, oh, it's. Okay. It's an intense film. Should we break for lunch? What time is it? Yeah, yeah. wait, wait. It's one. Yeah. Yeah. Two person has no. Uh, we can break for lunch, but, but we're missing you and you. Well, Jen, Jenny, <laughs> and you? Um, well, I've actually, I don't know, maybe this is just um, what I was thinking about. I've done work in these sorts of things before in the past, and I have a short time. Yeah, sure. Okay. That would be great. Um, yeah. And it talks, it talks about the Mexican experience in the mm -hmm. U.S. And okay, so, that would, that's a good um, idea. So yeah. I can work with Jamie on setting that up sure. after lunch. And, um, and you, we can do it after lunch if you want. Sure, yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. sure. Try before because I, I mean, I'm not dumb, I guess. And I tried to play DVD yesterday there and I couldn't do it. So okay. I, I have a pretty good follow up. Okay. <laughs> Maybe computer too. You, you wanted to tell us something or no? Yeah, um, my idea is radically different than everybody else's. Um, I was thinking uh, just because there's places in Ontario um, where there are huge stretches of highway um, through beautiful countryside, but um, nobody lives in that countryside. It's just like a highway that goes straight yeah. through. Um, and so I had this idea of... Um, I would think either the immigrant, somebody who didn't really fit in uh, somehow into the culture, uh, who would be living in one of these places because, I mean, there's, there's bridges and there's, you know, all these uh, valleys and things, um, and nobody lives there. And so, you know, this person would, you know, have sort of been, have sort of pushed society away, but would be very lonely. Um, and so to sort of get over their loneliness would spend time uh, with or near the traffic, sort of watching people and sort of being mm -hmm. there and sort of, you know, um, trying to get sort of the, the interpersonal contact um, from watching traffic or sort of, but being very isolated. Um, and then, yeah, sort of being, but also trying to hide because either they don't speak the language or because they're not welcome or because they don't have papers or whatever. Um, and basically just being isolated in a place where there's uh, tons of people, just nobody stops. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah very, nice. very nice. Almost uh, like almost a parallel world. Yeah, yeah, it's good. And uh, yeah, everyone like it's everyone sees it, but nobody s sees it because they're just driving through. There's uh, is nice. political asylum as easy in Canada as it is in Britain. Uh, it used to be. There, it's slowly changing, but it used to be. Yeah. So there's you have quite a uh, large number of people. If you get to Canada, did you just stay there? <laughs> we don't, we don't kick you out. Because for a long time, especially when we were trying to populate the country, we would take huge groups of refugees and just give them a town, and it's like here's your town. We so we have German, we have um, Aish, hmm? a lot of people from Haiti. Yes, yeah, absolutely. We have colonies, like little groups of people who are from everywhere. Um, so yeah, and then this could be one of those, or it could be. Uh, someone who was on a boat and got into, because um, the St. Laurentian has a lot of tra uh, boating traffic, mm -hmm. and then uh, you would come in uh, and 
they would maybe get off the boat and then try to run into Ontario, but then couldn't speak the language or couldn't find anywhere to stay. Um, and then so I ended up hiding under a bridge and sort of trying to get that personal contact from watching the cars go by. How do you account for the risk? It's going to be the risk of? The, well, the risk that's implied by the watcher and the clandestinity. Well, I don't know if you've ever been in a culture where you don't speak the language or where you don't know what's going on, um, but uh, in a lot of cases, just even somebody seeing you in any situation is, is very frightening because you don't know what they're going to do or you don't know how they're going to react. Um, and especially if you've been isolated for a long time, then any sort of interpersonal con contact is, is, is almost paralyzing. Um, so in this case, I would say this person has been isolated for so long and maybe doesn't speak the language, doesn't know how to communicate, um, and so is craving sort of that interpersonal attention but can't get it. Also the weather condition mm -hmm. yeah. could affect them, you know? The risk of co contact, it's really interesting. Just, mm -hmm. you know, even the most basic in contact. Yeah, just to see, you know, even like, you know, at a coffee bar, just chatting with somebody. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and also just surviving. Like, yeah, because uh, they don't yeah. have money, yeah. they don't have food. Yeah. yeah. It's not a country that it's not can like grow like the beach. vegetables. <laughs> and right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so nice. beautiful. Anyway. So shall we break now? Mm -hmm. Yeah.